In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the delayed time base in the Tektronix 2445. And this also applies to the 2455, 65, and 67 series oscilloscopes. The delayed time base has a number of uses. It allows us to uh, view a waveform at a relatively slow sweep speed and then zoom in on an area or two of that waveform anywhere within the display. You might do this to gain a greater detail of what the waveform looks like in a particular area, or even to make timing measurements between a couple of areas on the waveform. Now, of course, with modern digital scopes, zooming in on an area of a waveform is uh, very, very easy. Uh, back in the days before we had digital scopes, uh, we had to use things like the delayed time base. Now, to take a look at the delaying time base, I put a more interesting signal on the scope. This is a uh, NTSC test pattern coming from a signal generator used to test old TV sets. So the delaying time base is enabled by simply pulling on the seconds per division knob. And if we do that, uh, if we look carefully as we adjust the reference or delay position, you can see we're moving kind of an intensified dot across the screen, across the waveform. And we're getting a delay reading right here at the top of how far we're delayed from the original trigger event, which is all, all the way over here. So if I adjust the delay all the way over, we see we're at zero microseconds. Now I walk my way down, I can actually just use this to get an idea of the delay time from the trigger event to other events in the waveform. Of course, that might not be all that interesting because we've got cursors that we can use that for. The real magic of this becomes when we now, after pulling on the seconds per division knob, we rotate it further. And now if we take a look, uh, we can actually see we're highlighting a wider portion of that waveform and we're basically taking that portion that we're highlighting it and showing it to you down here so just zooming in on that particular area of the waveform this now allows me to you know trigger on and capture a slow time based setting of a waveform and zoom in on a particular area you can see from the display down here that the main time base is running at 20 microseconds per division and the intensified portion here which is uh, the B time base is running at 2 microseconds per division or 10 times faster. There's also a trace separation control right here that allows me to control how much I separate my B time base trace from the main. Turning it all the way up, the traces essentially uh, overlap. Uh, might make it a little bit tough to see what's going on here, but uh, that uh, you do have that ability, ability. And by rotating this down, we can separate those waveforms and now slide through our waveform here to look at any portion in greater detail. So uh, right now we've been uh, using a mode where the B time base literally just runs or sweeps after the delay setting that we've dialed in. Now if we hit the AB trigger button we can then select the B trigger to run after delay which is what it's set to right now. So if I hit the uh, button down here I can tell it to be triggered after delay. Now what that will do is after the delay that we've dialed in, it will then uh, go to run the B time base but wait until the B is satisfied by a trigger. Now you'll notice the difference as I move this uh, across here now, you see that it's jumping from one of these little peaks to another. And it's doing that because it's waiting until the B time base gets triggered in order before, before it displays a waveform. So unlike the run after delay where I can smoothly move uh, the delay back and forth, the triggerable after delay will cause the B time base to be triggered after the delay. So we're finding the first trigger triggerable event in the waveform after the delay setting. Now another interesting feature of the delayed time base on this series of scopes is the delta function. I can hit the delta T button here and what that will do is bring up a second highlighted area. Uh, and if I hit the del delta uh, knob here, I can actually see that second area moving back and forth. And this is the first area moving back and forth. What this allows me to do is find two spots in a waveform and line them up. And if I line these up exactly, we can actually see that it should be right around 63.5 or so microseconds, which is the uh, repetition rate of the horizontal lines uh, in an analog uh, TV, at least here in the US. 
Now, of course, these waveforms are laying on top of each other. I can't separate those uh, and still have the main time base available. However, if I now simply push in the seconds per division knob, that will turn off the A sweep and just leave me with the B sweep. And since the B sweep is now doing a delta T, I can actually move the position of either of these independently. And the trace separation knob will just control the separation of the two portions of the A sweep that we're looking at with the delta T function in the B sweep. Okay, so let's uh, let's turn off the delta T function here and get back to just a single delayed sweep here on the B channel. And uh, one other point thing I wanted to point out is if we start making the B sweep much much faster, obviously that makes the intensified portion here very uh, very narrow. But what it can also do is start to make uh, the B sweep kind of dim because relative to, you know, say the main time base, uh, we might be sweeping so fast that we just uh, are not going to really be able to see the uh, the B trace so much. Uh, so we're going to have the A trace look very bright and the B trace look uh, pretty dim. Uh, we could turn the intensity up to try to make up for that, but it's really just uh, not really helping us too much on the uh, delayed B sweep. So there's one more trick that uh, the designers thought of here. On the hold off knob, if you rotate it all the way fully clockwise, there's a uh, indicator down here that says B ends A. And what that does, it will cause the A sweep to stop right after the B uh, is, fin is uh, finished sweeping. And that tends to minimize the amount of time that A is kind of occupying the trace. and tends to make the B sweep show up just a little bit brighter. And we can kind of see as I move my delay, I'm extending you know, the A sweep here, but it does make the, this B sweep, which is now running a whole lot faster than the A sweep, a bit more visible. And you notice the difference here. You know, the A sweep is running at 20 microseconds of division. The B sweep is running at 50 nanoseconds of division. Well, I hope you learned a little something about how the delaying time base works in the 2445, 2455, and 65, 67 series scopes, and, uh, and appreciate some of the thought and ingenuity that went into the design of these scopes to allow uh, engineers to take a detailed look at uh, you know, multiple portions of complex signals in the days before uh, storage technology. Uh, if you like what you see, uh, give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so and tell your friends. And we'll look for you again uh, next time. Thanks for watching.